Some major changes need to be made to Texas Tech basketball if they want to get this season back on track. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast channel, reminding you to hit that subscribe button for daily Texas Tech videos pertaining to Texas Tech men's basketball news, rumors. We got you covered with Texas Tech baseball, which is just around the corner as well, and we'll never stop talking about Texas Tech football, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. But let's jump into the crux of the video today because... I'm recording this the morning after. I needed a little bit of time to thought process, you know, process everything that went on after the Twitter spaces last night as well. It was a therapy session is what I tweeted out in terms of watching Texas Tech lose by 34 points to the Iowa State Cyclones, the number 14 Iowa State Cyclones. And everything I am about to say today does not impact how I feel about Iowa State. That is a very good basketball team. DJ Ossenberger, I think, is one of the great coaches in college basketball. Not just the Big 12, in all of college basketball. Um, but this is self-reflection time for Texas Tech. There's a lot of things that need to change um, from the coaching standpoint, as well as on the floors with the X's and O's and the Jimmy's and the Joe's, as they say, right? So a lot of changes need to happen for Texas Tech as they are 0-4 in the Big 12 play, and it looks very bleak right now. I get it. You could have Fardaz Amak back, and we'll have an update hit on him and his possible return later in the video. But let's just get into last night and talk about what we saw in Ames, Iowa. First and foremost, tip of the cap to Iowa State. They are the better team. No debating that. But from a strictly Texas Tech standpoint... I don't know if they could have laid a more massive egg than they did in every aspect of the game. Coaching, execution, effort at times. But the one I really want to focus on is coaching because it's this. I don't think they're putting them in the right position to succeed in a lot of times. And now some of that is because of just roster construction and how things really haven't pieced together like everyone thought they would. And I'll wholeheartedly admit I thought... They were going to piece together better than this. But the main issue for me is coaching and then this. Texas Tech has got away from the fundamental principles that made this program great, which was what? I'll give you a second to answer. If you want to let me know down in the comments, if I'm wrong, by all means do so. Um, for me, it's defense and switchability, period. That is what made this team that top 15 program every year that everyone in Red Raider Nation expected, right? Everybody being able to switch defensively and teams just not wanting to play you because of what you do at the defensive end. That's changed this year. And they took a risk when it came to roster construction in terms of going out and getting guys like Devion, going and getting guys like Pop, Lamar, um, to a degree, Mostly Pop and Devion, and by no by no means is this a shot at Pop and Devion. It's more a shot at the coaching staff for not adjusting accordingly their defensive scheme. Right? You should know that Pop and Devion are not going to be able to switch onto everybody. That's not a knock on them. It's just a fact. They're six two and six three. You want them guarding a six nine guy? That's not how this works. Right, And you see it countless times over and over again on the defensive end where Texas Tech, they switch everything. That is their base defense. And you get Devion Harmon or Pop Isaacs on a big man in the post and the other team's big man just absolutely abuses them as he should. Right, Because that's what you're supposed to do in that situation. I would expect Pop to abuse a big man on the perimeter right, with off the dribble. I would expect that. Same with Devion. But when you put these guys in an improper position to succeed, there's a trickle-down effect. And the defense looks putrid. Putrid. Like, it's just not what you have come to expect from Texas Tech. And a lot of me wonders, are they just better off running a man defense and trying to run the no middle in that regard and then just have help with the five spot and Daniel Bacho come in and just try and block everything in that regard? I think they're better off that way. I really, truly do. Um, let me know down in the comments what you think the biggest issue right now is for Texas Tech men's basketball. Is it coaching, personnel? What do you think it is? Um, lack of shooting. I mean, at one point last night, Texas Tech was four for 37 on their last made threes. That's wild. That is wild. And it's a testament to how poor the spacing is offensively. 
Um, when you go two for 28 against Oklahoma, and then as a team you go five for 26? Five for 26 from three? And Kerwin Walton came in and had two of them late in the game. It's just... Um, there's a lot of frustration, and I get it. But let me know what you're most frustrated about from Texas Tech Athletics in terms of their men's basketball team, not athletics, men's basketball team. I'm getting a little heated in this video, messing my words up a little bit. It's just, it's frustrating to watch. Last night felt, I, I, I don't think Texas Tech fans have felt that way in a long time. And, you know, covering the team for six years, going on seven now, um, I haven't felt that way in terms of watching a game where it felt like, yeah, Texas Tech is just out of this from almost the immediate get-go. Um, at least, you know, 10 minutes into this first quarter, or first uh, half, excuse me. Like, it just felt like they were out of it. Um, and I haven't felt that way in a long time watching a Texas Tech game as a fan or as a media member. It always felt to me like, hey, Texas Tech is going to stay in this game uh, just because of the defense or they'll go on a run and it neither really happened um, for Texas Tech. So let me know again down in the comments below what you think Texas Tech men's basketball biggest problem is right now. You heard mine. I think it's coaching. I truly do. I think they got to be um, a little bit more lenient and shoot. This is a Mark Adams quote. I want to give credit to Texas uh, Tech Hoops guy on Twitter. This was from Mark Adams in his postgame presser after the Iowa State game. This team looked like it had it hadn't even been coached. This is my fault. We're going to make some changes. We're going to have to have this happen again. We're not going to allow this to happen again. I can assure you of that. One more time since I messed it up in the middle there. This team looked like it hadn't been coached. This is my fault. We're going to make some changes. We are not going to have this happen again. I can assure you of that. And my initial thought is, well, at least he addressed the problem and he knows what the problem is and it's coaching. Because listen, the playing, the talent's there. This team is too talented to be 0-4 in conference play. And I know there's probably going to be some people in the comments saying, RC, they're a dribbler or two away from, you know, potentially having two Big 12 wins. Well, you don't. You don't. Like, I, I don't know if this is a tough love situation or what it is. And I see Brandon Francis, Nor Zodiase on Twitter saying, maybe there needs to have a, you know, come to Jesus meeting with all the players and they just kind of, you know, hash things out. People yell at each other. That happens with good teams too, but there has to be major, and I mean major adjustments made when it comes down to the X's and O's in the play style on both the defensive and offensive side of the court for the Red Raiders because this thing could get away from you really, really fast. Now, for some positive news, Mark Adams did give a timeline for Fardaw's AMAC return. He said he should be hopefully playing in the next couple of games, maybe sooner than that. We've got some reinforcements coming. Listen, I I love this. Fardaw's coming back. I, I truly do. But I want to set, you know, a baseline expectation for this. I don't think people should be going out and expecting with Fardaw's coming back. He's going to just completely steer this ship in the right direction. First and foremost, I don't think the young man deserves to have that kind of expectations on him. I don't think anybody does. Right? Like, that's not fair to him for one player to come in and think, oh, this whole ship is going to change in the right direction and Texas Tech season is saved now because Fardos is back. Listen, he's a really good player. I, I, I expect a lot from him, but I don't expect that. I don't expect that from anybody. I don't think it's fair to expect that. Also, I don't expect that from a guy coming back from a foot injury that's a seven footer. He's going to be eased back into play as he should, and I think he's going to play well. But again, I don't think the expectation should be Fardaz Amac is going to come back and save Texas Tech season. I don't think that's how anyone should be looked at in college basketball. I don't think, first and foremost, it's fair to the fan base. But more importantly, I don't think it's fair to the player. I think you have to have realistic expectations, and I think everybody should do so with Fardaz. But it will be fun to have him back, and I do think Texas Tech will be an improved team with Fardaz on the floor, but that's going to do it again. Um, this almost felt like a therapy video as well as my uh, Twitter spaces yesterday did. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, be sure to do so at RCMB talking Texas tech hoops and Texas tech athletics all year long, just like we're doing right here on the back to 12 podcast channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on the latest Texas tech news and rumors right here on the back to 12 podcast channel.